Hey, this is just going to be a really quick, hopefully, tutorial about how to process your images, uh, your confocal images using Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through most of the most common things that you'll probably end up doing. Uh, so we're going to do changing some channels, uh, isolating channels, making merges, and making black and whites. So let's just get to it. So I'm going to assume uh, when you start this that you've already had your stacks taken and exported from either ImageJ or Leica Lite. And so I have two Genotype 1 and Genotype 2. Genotype 1 is a, a three-channel image. It's got GFP shotgun in red. You can hear it in red and DLG in blue. And this one has only just red and green. So we're just going to do some quick processing with those. So first thing you want to do is just make a new, uh, a new canvas. So you go File, New. And what I personally do is I make a fairly large canvas, which is going to be a lot larger than we're going to need to work with. And then I crop it down after. So I pick something that's around 5,000 by 5,000. These images are 512 by 512, so this should be plenty big enough for this. Uh, for most cases, especially if you're just making something for a presentation, 72 pixels per inch is more than enough. If you're making something for a poster or uh, if you're processing images for a publication, you probably want to set this at 300, but for what we need, 72 seems to be good. And you want to make sure that your color mode is set to RGB, not uh, CMYK or grayscale. Okay, So RGB, just like when you take your uh, images, is the color, uh, the color mode that you want to use. So you make a new canvas. And so here's our new canvas. So the first thing I usually do, let's start working on the, uh, the two channel images. You just drag your image onto the, the canvas and it imports it. You press enter and it'll accept it and put it in. So here it is. The first thing I usually do is I make uh, a group just to make the, the, your system a little bit more uh, organized because all of these uh, layers and different channels are going to end up having layers on top of them and it's going to turn into a big mess if you don't keep it organized. So you can click on the little folder icon right down here to add a new group and then you can take your, your layer and just drag it into that group and double click on the name right here to rename it. So this is right here, Genotype 2. So we'll just type Genotype 2. And so now everything that I work with this image I'm going to put in this folder. So uh, if I need to come back and edit something or change some colors or something like that, it's always going to be here and I don't need to worry about it. So before we start actually uh, pulling stuff out of the image uh, or uh, isolating colors and channels and switching things around, the first thing I usually do is I uh, set up the basic grid that the images are going to fall in for the figure. So what I do is you go to uh, View, Snap, and you turn this on. And you make sure if you go to Snap 2, all of this is selected. So you can just click All and select all of this. And you can press Control R to turn the rulers on and off. So you want the rulers on. What you do is you just click on the ruler and drag to drop a guide, and it'll snap to the end of the image. So what I usually do is I drop a guide like this that kind of borders the image. And then I'll drop a guide right next to it. So. And then this is where the next image is going to go. And I'll keep doing this for as many times as it's needed. So we have the first image. And this is usually what I do before I even start isolating the colors, is I actually just build the entire figure. And then I'll go ahead and isolate all the colors after. So if you hold down with the layer selected of your, of your picture, you hold down Alt, and you just click and drag, and you'll make a copy. Okay, And it'll snap to that corner. And now because this line is here, they'll all be lined up. Okay, and so we go ahead and we do it again. We'll drop another guide like that, and we do it one more time. Okay, so now we have our three panels for the three different uh, colors. So it's going to be green, red, and merge. So what I do now is personally, because I, I'm a little bit anal retentive about this, I like to have all of this organized, and right now they're all backwards. Right, I like to have the leftmost image on the top, so it just if you click and drag on these layers, you can reorder them. So now this one's the top, middle one's the middle, and the bottom one's on the left. All right, so now what we need to do is start pulling colors. So this is just going to be 
a simple color, uh, color image, so it's going to be the red, the green, or sorry, the green, the red, and then the merge. Okay. So what you do is with the layer you want selected, okay, so I want to edit this one, you click on this little button right here. Okay, it's an adjustment layer. You go to channel mixer. And so what this gives you is it may appear here, it may appear out like this or docked to one of these sides, it doesn't really matter where it, where it shows up, but you'll see this window up here. And what this shows you is right here, it's got the output channels and then these are all your input channels. Okay, so when red is selected as your output channel, it's showing you basically everything that's being outputted is red. So right now, anything that's originally in the image is red, 100% will be outputted as red. Anything that's in the image is green, 100% green, will be outputted as green. And as you can imagine, anything that's blue will be outputted as blue. All right. So what we want to do is we want to pull the red and the green out of the image. So what we do is we go to the blue. We take the input of 100 to blue and we put it to zero. And the same with the red. So we go to the red and we turn it to zero. And now we've pulled all of the color out of the image except for the, uh, the green, right? Because the red that's being inputted is no longer being outputted as anything. The only thing that's got an output is the green and it's being outputted as green. But this mixer is now being applied to all of the images, right? All three panels. And we only really want it to the first. So what we can do is we can uh, clip this mix, the channel mixer, to this layer. And how we do that is we hold, press and hold the Alt button. And then you just mouse between the two layers and you can see that it changes to these two little circles. Okay, this is setting a clipping, uh, a clipping mask or a clipping whatever. So you just hold down Alt and you click between the two layers. And you'll see now this adjustment only works on this first layer and not on the other two. So now we can go ahead and do the exact same thing to pull the red out of the second image. So we go channel mixer, okay, we clip it to our layer. We go and we take the green, we turn the green off and we take the blue. There shouldn't be any blue in this image, but I typically do that anyway. And we turn the blue off. And so we have our image now. So we have three channels and each channel is now just green, red, merge. So let's say now you actually want to flip the colors around for these images. So you like the green is red and you want the red is green. So I just made a copy of all of this. And let's just delete all of our adjustments. So again, we use the channel mixer to do this. Okay. And this is a little bit more complicated. So, but it's the same basic principle as removing the color. So again, we go to the channel mixer, we clip it to our, our layer we want to adjust. Now in this, so let's turn the blue off just because, oops, because we're not going to be using any blue anyway. So we go to the red. Okay, so we want this to be the green channel in red. Okay, so we go to the green channel, the output of green. We don't want anything outputted as green here, so we turn that to zero. Okay, now, uh, sorry, I'm getting confused now. Uh, it's so much easier to do this without having to talk. Let me just undo. Okay, so uh, what am I doing here? Okay, so we want to take the output of green. Okay, and we want to turn that off. And now the red, we want to turn that off. So now we have everything off. And we want to output the red channel, what's appearing in the red, as green. Okay, so we go to the output of green and we turn the red to 100. Okay, so now the red channel input, so the, the red that was originally in the image, is being outputted as green. And we can do the same thing for the other one now. Okay, so let's turn the blue off just to get things started. I think this is the best way of doing is I just turn everything off and then just go through it. So we want to output red for this channel and we want the green channel to be outputted as red. So we turn the green to 100 and now the green channel is being outputted as red. 
So it's a little bit more complicated, but it's the same, the same basic idea. And it's the same logic if you want to do a, uh, if you want to do a, uh, a three-channel image. So let's go. We'll type one. So let's take this genotype one image. This is a, a three-channel image now, and it's the same idea. Fraps is really slowing my computer down. Sorry about that. So we'll just drop a guide there so everything's lined up. And drag this into genotype one. And so we have one, two, three images. And now this one has an extra channel, so we'll drop another guide really quick. Like so, and put our fourth panel, right? So. We have three images and uh, the three channels in the merge. And let's just organize them. That should be right. One, two, three, and merge. Yeah. So it's the same idea. So let's say we just, we like the colors we took it in. We want green, red, blue, and merge. So we do the same thing. Channel mixer, clip, red's off, blue's off. Channel mixer. Uh, this one is green is off, blue is off, and the third image, channel mixer, clip it in, red off, and green is off. Like that, and so there we go. Red, uh, green, red, blue, merge. And one typical thing that we, we do. Uh, in order because blue typically doesn't show up that well, is we do uh, a hue adjustment on the blue. And you can do that, so basically what you do is you put it on top of all of your images. You go to hue saturation. You go here to where it says master and you go down to blues and you do a hue shift minus 47. And it makes uh, the blue this kind of cyan color that's easy to see. And you can see it's only, it's only acting on the blues. It's not acting on any of the other colors. Okay. And also, let's say, uh, you can also, what's really nice about this is you can do um, levels adjustments across the board on all of your images. If you want, let's say you make a set of, uh, a set of panels and you feel the red needs to be brightened up, and, but everything needs to be compared, you can just basically change the red on every single image. So you can do that by going again to here, you go to levels, you pick the channel you want to change. So let's say we want to boost uh, the red, and then you can change this red and white one, don't change the gray one in the middle, just the red and white one. And you can see you're changing the red across the board. You're changing the red levels for all of the images. And you're doing them all at once, all right? So this is really useful if you want to make adjustments across the board. But you have to be careful. Sometimes, let's say you're not doing that, you have to be careful where you put this layer. So let's go to, for example, this one here. So this is the one where we did the, uh, where we did the, sh the change in colors. Uh, let's see if we can find the first one here. So remember, this, uh, this is a color shift, right? This is the red that's being shifted to green. In, in this particular image. So if I take the levels, right? So let's say I clip it to this layer. And let's say I want to tweak the green. So I go to green and uh, I tweak it up. Right? You can see it's, it's boosting the green like you expect. And that's because this is the green that it's working on, right? It basically works on everything below it, okay? So if I just do it to the, the merged image, it boosts the green in the merged image and it boosts the green in just this channel. But if I take this layer and I drag it below the channel mixer, you see it doesn't work anymore. Because what's happening is we have the merged image, red and green, it's boosting the green, and then it's removing the green with the next layer, okay? So you have to be careful where you put this layer. It, every layer works on the one below it, okay? So if this is below, is making it more green, and then this channel mixer is basically just removing that green. Whereas if you do it like this, this channel mixer is removing everything and switching that one color from red to green, and then this layer now is boosting the green. So you have to be a little bit careful, and this is why groups kind of help in how you organize these layers, because it actually does 
uh, make a difference in, in the final product. So that's just uh, changing some colors and boosting some boosting levels. Let's just remove this and remove this one. Now let's talk about making uh, some images black and white. So in the past, I originally thought the best way of doing that was actually going into the channels and actually pulling, uh, pulling the colors out using the channels. But I find I've been playing around with this today quite a bit, actually. And I found that this is not actually the, the quickest or most accurate way of doing uh, isolating the colors and making them black and white. So this is, I find, and I, I looked at really closely. I was pulling colors and setting these adjustments and seeing which, which is the best. I find that the best way of doing it is to, you can actually use the channel mixer. Okay, so let's again go to this first image. Okay, and let's say we want to take out everything but the green and then make the green black and white. So we go to our channel mixer. We clip it like we go normal. And now instead of output channel being red, if you click down, uh, sorry, right below here, it says monochrome. So you turn this on and it basically gives, it removes all of your output channels and gives you only gray, okay? And what it does now is it gives you sliders for red, green, and blue. So for the red you want, or sorry, for the, the green you want to set to 100%, the red to zero and the blue to zero. And now what it's doing is it's saying all the green in the image here, I want it outputted as gray. Okay? And you can do the same thing for the the red now, so channel mixer, you set to monochrome, we turn the green off, the red up to full blast, the blue off, and so now we have our three images. We have two black and whites, bang, bang, and then our merge. And from here you go ahead and label them and, you know, put uh, titles on here. You can put the, the colors here if you want, genotypes, whatever, and yeah. That's pretty much it. It takes a little bit of getting used to, especially with changing the, mixing the channels around, but once you get the hang of it, you'll still probably make some mistakes like I did, get a little confused every now and then, but it's a more robust way of doing it than uh, what we used to do, which was going up here, going to image, uh, this, da, 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 da. going to image, adjustments, and then channel mixer. Because when you do it like this, let's say uh, we just isolate the red channel, right? This is permanent now. That other data with the blue and the, the green is just gone. We deleted all of that, and this is just red. Whereas if you do it this way, it's, you can just go back and readjust things, play with levels, do stuff like that. It's a lot more flexible. So hope this helps, uh, and uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, I guess, and good luck.